Sunday City. Of all our guests, Chris Schinkel. Chris, welcome to the program. You've been covering the National Sports Festival in Indianapolis, a native Hoosier. I'm sure that pleases you to get back home and cover a big event back in Indiana. Well, it makes uh, the traveling mic and, uh, a little easier because uh, we actually, our home base is about 90 miles north of Indianapolis, so instead of uh, going to some distant point, uh, I've been able to just go a little bit, and I've just finished eight days there. We'd completed boxing yesterday, and um, had a sales meeting in Chicago with ABC last night, so I'm back here taking it easy in northern Indiana. Don't blame you. 282-5111, the number to call here for Des Moines, town surrounding Des Moines. Toll-free Watts line if you want to talk to Chris Schinkel of ABC Television Sports, 1-800-532-1111. And our long-distance line for people calling outside the state of Iowa, area code 515-282-5120. Indianapolis, as both you and I know, Chris, because I'm a native Hoosier myself and I get back there from time to time, they've built a track and field stadium, an auditorium, for the swimming and diving competitions. They've got nice tennis courts for the U.S. Open Championships, a big Hoosier dome that doesn't have any occupants as of yet, but they keep on hoping, I suppose. And they, there's even talk of hosting an Olympics in Indianapolis. They're, they're really committed to amateur sports. Well, it was amazing. Uh, they formed an Indiana Sports Corporation, a nonprofit corporation, and what their, the basis for forming it was that uh, their slogan became... Uh, our commitment to amateur athletics is total. And believe me, they have lived up to their slogan because uh, I did both the outdoor and indoor opening ceremonies, emceed them, and uh, I've done seven Olympic Games. And it, uh, the opening of the sports festival was as stupendous, uh, exciting, and colorful as any Olympic opening that I've ever covered. So they, they started high. And it just continued to go high. In fact, they're breaking all kinds of records uh, at swimming and at volleyball, at any of most of the 33 sports they had sellouts. And where the United States Olympic Committee usually has to help uh, underwrite a project like this, it looks like uh, the festival this year will perhaps get a half a million dollars uh, to give back to the Olympic Committee. So. All in all, it's the most successful of the four festivals that uh, the USOC has staged. That's good news. We're talking with Chris Schinkel of ABC Television Sports, and we'll be here for a few more minutes with Chris. We invite you to get your calls in at 282-5111 here in the city. Our toll-free Watts line, 1-800-532-1111, and our long-distance line for people calling outside the state of Iowa, area code 515-282-5120. Good evening. You're on the air with Chris Schinkel. Hi, Chris. Hello there. How are you tonight? Fine. Hey, Chris, did you follow the basketball over there at all? Well, I uh, I really didn't have an opportunity because it seemed to, the boxing seemed to be on at the very same time that basketball was uh, being staged. So I didn't get out to any of the games, but I, I know they had a unbelievable group of young athletes there. And, uh -huh. of course, the previous year, so many great ones came out of the, out of the festival, like Pat Ewing of Georgetown. And he was the main one, I think, and Worthing. And just, uh, so I'm sure this year that uh, they'll have smoked somebody out that's extremely good. I'm sure they will. You don't, you don't know if uh, ABC is going to televise any of the, the, have any basketball coverage well, we have, tomorrow, do you? Uh, we have three and a half more hours to go. Uh, an hour and a half tomorrow in Wide World of Sports and then a special two-hour on Sunday. But I, they will have highlights of basketball. They'll have highlights of a lot of sports. So that'll be a pretty good uh, opportunity for, for all of us to get an idea who was there and how they did. Sir, if you're wondering how the three Hawkeyes did, I've got all the complete statistics. Points oh, Sue, well, that's what I wanted to know, Mike. Well, we'll get to that when Van Coleman comes on, okay? Okay, super. Be all, right. all right, thanks a lot. Goodbye now. We've got the points, the rebounds, minutes played out of a total 48 possible for all three games, Boyle, Stokes, and Banks. Well, we're guys were exciting to watch. I travel enough that uh, I got to see them two or three times this year, and I have a great love for Iowa, Mike, because it, it's very similar to Indiana, where I grew up and where you grew up, and uh, it's, it's always nice to be a part of the big Midwestern scene, and Iowa certainly did well. They made the state proud. 
They certainly did with Lou Dolson and the rest of them, and they're going to be losing a couple of people that will be awfully hard to replace, but they've got some folks coming in that I think will fill the void quite adequately. I'd uh, like to ask you, Chris, just what your itinerary is right now. I don't see you on as many football games as I used to, and the scoreboard show, I guess you won't be there next year. No, I, uh, I, I resigned from the scoreboard show. It was, uh, it was something that I enjoyed doing for a couple of years, but it's, it's not the excitement and being on the scene of action. I don't know what my assignments will be uh, yet this fall in the immediate uh, future. I have a a heavyweight fight coming up uh, a week from Saturday. It's uh, oh, it's Trevor Burbick going against Ronaldo Snipes, and it'll come from Cleveland. And then uh, an area which is a little different, but it's one I like. I have the World Championship Billiard uh, event in New York, and I uh, many years ago did a lot of uh, pocket billiards with Willie Moscone, the uh, the all-time great. And it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to get an off-beat thing like that every now and then to, to break, uh, break, break. It's a change of pace for us. And then soon I'll know about football. But uh, at the moment, uh, like so often is the case with the network, Mike, uh, you really don't know. You're kept pretty much in the dark. Uh -huh. But that's all right, too. Then, you, then, you can, then you're in for surprises. We're talking with Chris Schinkel of ABC Television Sports, the toll-free Watts line, 1-800-532-1111, our local line, 282-5111. That's good for Des Moines surrounding towns and our long-distance line for listeners outside the state of Iowa, area code 515-282-5120. Chris, you've been broadcasting sports for a long, long time, and I just wanted to know, uh, in your own opinion, why have you been so successful? Well, I think uh, I, I came along at the right time, and I think there, I, I suppose you have to have a fair amount of talent, but you also have to uh, uh, have a lot of breaks, and the timing has to be right. And I had the good fortune of getting um, a solid background in radio before television really came along. And then I was in on television at its very beginning in the uh, mid-40s doing Harvard football games, and then eventually... Uh, was lucky enough to get with the New York football giants and do their games with, for CBS. And then it just kept rolling, kept doing things. And, and I've always tried to, well, not specialize, but just do the, do the sports that I thoroughly enjoyed because it made it so much easier. And I think you're more knowledgeable in the things you enjoy doing. So I have been a lucky guy over the years, and uh, I hope it holds out for a while longer. Well, you don't have any intentions of slowing down, do you? No, I really don't, because, uh, gosh, I always, in speeches, kid about uh, what better job in the world get paid to see a sport event <laughs> and also get free tickets to the events. So, no, I can't think of anything I'd, I'd rather do, and I've wanted to do this since I was 12 years old. So um, why, why quit? And uh, I'm just one of those persons that likes to keep active and... Even when I'm home, I'm active. I'm a farm boy originally, so I have a couple of farms, and uh, we raise popcorn and soybeans. And speaking of popcorn, now that I think about it, Iowa and Indiana have always had a great battle on who is number one in popcorn. That's right. I was recently talking with my father about that, and he was under the impression that Indiana was number one because of all the Purdue hybrids, uh, especially from Redenbacher, but I think Iowa's on top. We raise a Iowa hybrid, as a matter of fact. Developed a marvelous white hybrid popcorn, hullless, that is just a tremendous grower. And uh, we've used Iowa popcorn on the farm um, for about seven years now. And it does a good job, a good yield. And uh, I made a speech in, uh, I guess, Sioux, Sioux City? Sioux City on the west side. Right. And I, I drew, I've just drawn a blank on the name of the popcorn processor there, but he's one of the large ones. And uh, they, they were amazed that back here in Indiana we used Iowa hybrids to grow and uh, produce popcorn. But it is a tremendous variety. Chris, we've got a call waiting on one of the Watts lines. Good evening. You're on the air with Chris Schenkel. Okay. I'm a gentleman that had called uh, sports line before. Now, uh, Chris, what is the 
what are the facilities like there at Indianapolis? Um, are they a lot different than what they were in Syracuse, New York, um, last year when they had the uh, festival there? Festival there. Uh, they were they were more than adequate in Syracuse uh, because of the university and because of their dome and um, and because of the water, which took care of all the rowing and the kayaking, et cetera. But in Indianapolis, they they just have more specialized facilities. They were fortunate enough to have a couple of endowments in the city to build a $22 million natatorium swim event place. And their velodrome, which is for cycling, is probably the best in the world. So where do they play basketball at there? The play? basketball was... Uh, was being played at Indiana Central in their gymnasium. And the reason for that was that uh, Market Square Arena, where the Indiana Pacers play, uh, was being used for ho- for figure skating and some of the hockey. And Convention Center was being used for boxing, judo, uh, gymnastics, ping pong, and uh, sports like that. Now where, where is the... Uh, festival going to be next year? Uh, the sports festival uh, next year will be back in Colorado Springs where it started in 1978. And, uh, of course, the sports festival is only on, uh, only staged in non-Olympic years. So with it being 83, then an 84, of course, uh, the games will be in Yugoslavia, the winter games and the summer games in Los Angeles. And incidentally, Mike, and to your call, uh, person calling in, uh, we have a total of 207 hours of television coverage of the Los Angeles Olympic Games. So I think America will really, for the first time, get to see all of the events that are a part of an Olympiad. Well, it helps, too, when the location of those Olympics is so proximate time zone-wise to New York. Yes, because this way we can actually uh, do a lot of daytime coverage and, of course, uh, a lot of nighttime coverage. Yeah, that's really interesting. Now, how about when the Winter Olympics is going to be in... Ca- now, isn't it the Winter Olympics in 88 going to be in Calgary? Calgary, that's right, in Canada. And, so that'll, uh, be, that'll be a good... That will be another break, and uh, the bidding for that is in the process right now, and I hope ABC is fortunate as they have been for the last few. And uh, Because when you're in a time zone, it was like Montreal... And like, like Placid, it just makes it easier for everyone because you don't have to change your own physical time clocks. Whereas Yugoslavia, we have 70 hours for the Winter Games, and uh, most, most of it, uh, like in Munich, Germany, when we did those, you have a six- or seven-hour time difference. So the majority of our work usually comes because the things are taped. Right. But a strange hour in Yugoslavia, but a good hour back here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, great. Well, I, I know you'll enjoy 84. It'll be uh, the most extensive that has ever been done. And I know they do a pretty good job of uh, describing what goes on on TV, and I really appreciate well, that. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for the call, sir. We do have some other calls to move along to, and... We right. want to get to those calls just as quickly uh, as we can here for Chris Schinkel of ABC Television Sports. We'll give you the numbers once again. Toll free, 1-800-532-1111. And our long distance line, area code 515-282-5120. The local line is 282-5111. Chris, you mentioned Munich, 1972. Was that the saddest moment in your career as a sportscaster, or would it have been something else? I think it probably was because it involved uh, athletes that were participating in the games uh, representing uh, Israel and uh, were there for a reason and uh, then you had that tremendous outside influence that came in and, and did what they did and it was so damaging to the Munich Olympic Committee who tried to play down violence that had happened in World War II and it was just sad to see people who were trying their very, very best to have a, uh, such outside influences come in. And, but I've had a few. I, I um, was in Poland a little more than a year ago. I was supposed to fly with our amateur boxing team to Warsaw, Poland, for a meet. And uh, 
I couldn't meet their plane, so I went another way, and when I landed in Warsaw, Poland, they had just crashed, and our entire boxing team and some great coaches had been killed in the crash, and I had to report on that for ABC News, and that was one of the saddest afternoons I've ever spent in my life, and of course, the repercussions sort of, they, they're carried with you, and it was renewed again before each of our boxing sessions at the sports festival since a trainer named Sarge Johnson was a native of Indianapolis was one of those killed um, they had moments of silence for all that died and uh, it was just brought back very vividly and uh, there again it's just luck that I didn't go on the flight with them which I normally would do and and uh, it, it's just, it was sad but I guess those are, those are the two great uh, unbelievably down moments and all the years of excitement that I've had. Okay, Chris, we have another call for you on one of the wants lines. Good evening. You're on the air with Chris Schinkel. Yeah, Chris, I'd uh, I'd like to suggest to you that there'd be a good opportunity to uh, televise a, a uh, football game this September. All right. I thought I think it would be real interesting to see the Orange Bowl participant uh, last year, Nebraska, and the Rose Bowl participant, Iowa. They each play each other the first game of the season. What's the chances of having that on regional TV anyway? I don't know what the network is going to do about that. They haven't uh, they haven't announced their complete schedule yet. And uh, I could point out here that uh, it uh, it isn't just ABC Sports that does the choosing. The NCAA has a television committee and of uh, about 12 members from as many colleges or universities, and they very much are in on the selection of the games that we present. But I agree with you. I, I can't think of a better game uh, than having Iowa and Nebraska. But uh, and speaking of that, one of the great thrills I had doing college football was doing Iowa, Iowa State. Um, they hadn't met for many, many years, and, and doing that game is one of the most thrilling I think that I've ever done. That was the 1977 game in which they renewed the series. That was just an unbelievable... The, the crowd was the uh, the most pleasant, uh, happiest, most well-behaved uh, football crowd, I think, that I've ever seen. Well, I'd sure like to see, see that, that game. Well, uh, let's see. It's July now, so I would think in about, um, in about 10 days the network will put out their, their schedule. Uh, through about the first four Saturdays. And, of course, this year we have an added thing where CBS is also doing college football. So that's a break for all uh, all us fans. Uh, there will be more games on, and this gives a better opportunity to regionalize football coverage, which I think is important because occasionally we have games on that don't interest a lot of us uh, because they are not regional in nature. So I, I'm hoping that Iowa and Nebraska will be on. That, that, and then I'd like to, there's another thing, uh, like Mike, Mike, one of my favorite uh, sports overall is ice hockey. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I would sure love to see uh, somewhere in maybe Canada or in Minnesota the tournaments that the amateur hockey leagues, say the, the, the guys, the kids that are 10, 11, aren't they leagues, something? Some of those uh, tournaments, I think that would really be interesting. They would, they would really would be, uh, because I have attended a few of those games because of sons who were interested in hockey. And uh, I think some of the leagues that, uh, even even in, um, for instance, an area like Toledo, Ohio, they have a tremendous youth league. And then with Detroit, and then you, as you say, keep going up north to uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin. But I think what's going to help that will be uh, cable television and the combination of cable and uh, on-the-air television. Uh, Down the road, we'll see a lot more events than we've been able to see up to now. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for the call. We have a call on the local line for you, Chris. Good evening. You're on the air with Chris Schinkel. Uh, Yes, Uh, Chris, I'd like to compliment you on your bowling series, C.D.L. I... I thoroughly enjoy your commentating on there very much. Well, thank you. 
My question is, do you miss doing football now, Chris, since you don't do football anymore? Well, I, doing the scoreboard show sort of kept me in touch, but uh, any time that uh, you don't do the events that you did so much of over the years, uh, the same is true of golf. And uh, the, up to now, those are two that I have really missed because I've done hundreds of them, and uh, and not to be around it, it's it's a little uh, disappointing. Good. But, but I, I be, I'm like you, though. Then I become a television watcher, so I get to see the games along with you. Do you feel like you've been kind of uh, kind of shut down the ladder a little bit? Or? Well, I, I think anytime anything is taken away from you, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a bitter disappointment. But uh, I suppose there are reasons for it. And, uh, you know, I've been lucky to do the number that I've had. And I hope to be doing more in the future. So uh, it's, it's been a good couple of years where I can sit back and sort of uh, reevaluate what's good commentary and what isn't. So, um, you know, all in all, uh, there's always something good comes out of uh, disappointment, I guess. Well, keep uh, up the good work. I enjoy this. Oh, well, you. thank you. I, I enjoy it, and, and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm. And thank you for calling up on Sportsline this evening. Chris, in 1973, Jack Olson of Sports Illustrated wrote a, an article about you and one of the things that was mentioned was your, your style of play-by-play, -play, which was basically give the fans the score, give them the location of the ball and who has it, and, and let the color commentator do a lot of the work. Uh, I guess that's the style you still maintain. The uh, announcer can't be bigger than the event. Well, this is, um, there, there's been a change in that philosophy. There are some announcers that think they are bigger than the event, and there's no way that that can ever happen. And I've always, I learned at an early age that in television commentary, a play-by-play -play announcer has certain obligations that he must give, and those are the key points that you pointed out, Mike. And I think it's more writing captions to a picture, like captions you'd see in the newspaper. And I think uh, over the past few years, we've had over-talk, because I watch games or events with people, and you really don't hear what the announcer says most of the time, and most, and in very many cases, you don't care what he has to say, because we all have our opinions, and sometimes I get tired of hearing uh, commentators' opinions. Mm -hmm. I like it more straight down the line, report the game, and let the viewer uh, make his own mind up on what happened. Chris, what is the role of a sportscaster as a critic, uh, a critic of players, of coaches, of referees, etc.? What's your opinion well, about I've that? I've had the theory when you're doing amateur sports that uh, the play-by-play -play announcer uh, does not have a right to criticize the athlete. Amateur athletics. In professional football, I still think you don't have a right to criticize them. You, you have more of a right, perhaps, to say why he dropped the ball or why he didn't succeed uh, a little bit more in pro sports. But um, I don't know. I think you have to put yourself in the place of the athlete and realize and, and try to realize if you were down there playing how you would like the commentator to report on what you had just done, good or bad. In, in that interview, Chris, with, with Jack Olson back in 73, you said that you still saw sports heroes as heroes and you think the audience sees them as the same way. Do you still believe that? Oh, I just think a great guideline over the years that's changed a little bit uh, has been the sports hero for all the young people in America, looking up to them, and in most cases uh, they led an exemplary life. And uh, it's changed somewhat now, though, with the big salaries and... Uh, and in the case of some professional athletes not really cooperating with fans. Uh, there are so many of those who refuse to sign autographs, which I have never understood. And I've, I worked on pro basketball with one, Bill Russell, who always refused to sign autographs, and I could never understand that because the youngsters would come up to him and he'd say, I don't sign autographs. Well, I think that's their obligation, to sign autographs or to relate to their fans, because without the fans buying tickets, watching television, buying products, they wouldn't be getting those enormous salaries that they receive. 
So I'm I'm more on the side of the viewer or the fan. Um, I I just think there should be more cooperation from professional athletes in particular. Chris, I'd like to end this interview on an upbeat note. What Good. are your most thrilling moments, your most memorable, happy moments as a sportscaster? Well, uh, I think probably having done um, Arnold Palmer's four Masters golf tournament victories in even years starting in 58 and going through 64, those were memorable because he's the man, the singular, uh, the singular influence that brought golf to where it is today. So to have been a part of that was super. And then, of course, I did the first sudden victory, overtime championship National League football game between the New York Giants and the Baltimore Colts. And that was the beginning of the popularity of pro football. But there have been so many others. Nebraska-Oklahoma games, they uh, stick out in my mind. And, uh, and going back in early days, Mike, and radio, uh, doing some of the high school basketball games that I did. Back in Muncie? Back in Muncie, Indiana, Richmond, Indiana, wherever they were, uh, those were great thrills. And uh, it all started by listening to stations like WHO and KDK and WOWO. That helped generate the interest and, and uh, allowed me to pursue a profession that's been a lot of fun and full of thrills. Chris Schinkel, thank you very much for cooperating and living up to your word of, of making yourself available to the people who love you and admire you out there. Well, Mike, I um, enjoy you and, and Jim, and be sure and tell Jim hello for me. I'll do that. And uh, when you get back to your home state of Indiana, come see us. And I can't say enough for the state of Iowa and the people that live there. It's, when I come to Iowa, I love Des Moines. Uh, and other areas, Ames, you name it, I feel very much at home, and it's all because of the people that live there. Chris Schinkel, thank you very much for being with us. Thanks, Mike. Chris Schinkel has been our guest for the first half hour of WHO's Sportsline program. In a few minutes, we'll be talking with Van Coleman, and we'll have the results of how Brian Boyle, Greg Stokes, and Andre Banks did in their three games at the National Sports Festival in Indianapolis.